NATO foreign ministers have met in Latvia to discuss a response to Russia's military build-up on Ukraine's border. About a month ago, the US reported that Russian troops were gathering in large numbers in several cities near the Russian border with Belarus and Ukraine. Russia says it's entitled to station its troops on its territory and insists they pose no threat. But NATO and Ukraine say Moscow may be preparing to launch an attack. The meeting of NATO's top diplomatic ministers comes at a tense time. They have pledged their support to Ukraine and are calling on Russia to stand down. We stand united uh, in our aim to deter Russia from any further aggressive actions. We call on Russia to be transparent, de-escalate and reduce tensions. Any future Russian aggression against Ukraine would come at a high price and have serious political and economic consequences for Russia. The appeal follows growing concern over Russian troops seen massing near the Ukraine border in early November. The build-up sparked fears of a possible invasion. Ukraine responded with its own show of force, military exercises in the border region. <laughs> We have complete control over our borders, and we are fully prepared for any escalation. Tensions are rising between Russia and the West over Ukraine's renewed bid to join the NATO military alliance. For the Kremlin, any expansion of military aid to Ukraine is a red line. What are we to do in such a scenario? We will then have to create something similar in relation to those who threaten us in that way and we have the capacity to do so. Ukraine already had a war scare with Russia earlier this year. In April, Russia deployed thousands of troops within striking distance of Ukraine. Moscow called it a military exercise and then said the troops were being withdrawn. Western military experts say the maneuvers this November were less visible, perhaps on purpose. We, we don't have clarity into uh, Moscow's intentions. But we do know its playbook. This is the latest in several attempts at peace talks. Tensions remain with no end in sight. I'm joined now by Artis Pabriks, Latvia's defence minister. Mr Pabriks, thanks for joining DW. The US and other NATO allies are worried about a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Do you share those concerns? Yes, I do share those concerns because uh, uh, Russia mm, is following revisionist policy for the last decade or so. So uh, it has been invading Georgia, it has been invading Ukraine, it is uh, basically controlling now almost all activities within Belarus. So that means that we can expect any type of challenge and we know that Russian political elite is not afraid to use military force when it decides it is suits to their purposes. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has warned Russia that any aggression in Ukraine would trigger serious consequences. What do you think NATO should... How, how do you think NATO should respond? Well, one, one question is how NATO as an organization should respond, but I would uh, also ask a question, how do separate nations and uh, European countries are responding to the crisis uh, as, or possible crisis between Ukraine and Russia? And I'm kind of a little bit ashamed coming from the Baltic countries, uh, knowing also our history, when there have been still 20, 30 years ago talks about red lines, we cannot, you know, just challenge, we should step back. You see, I'm ashamed that there are only a few countries which in the last five years have been actually capable and willing to support Ukraine, also militarily, because this is a nation which is standing for its borders, for its freedoms. And uh, at this moment, if I'm correct, there is only Canada, uh, United Kingdom and United States, which is uh, ready to sell, for instance, military equipment to Ukrainian army and to assist with also their 
a transformation of the army, while other European nations are thinking that if they will not support Ukraine, they can preserve peace. Peace is a very good thing, but sometimes um, by thinking about peace, we make appeasement and actually we are um, playing according to the playbook of Kremlin. And this is not a good thing. This is not bringing us closer to security and peace. We should support Ukraine. Well, what would you say then to other European nations and other NATO uh, member allies? W w what should they be doing? Well, I think we have been delayed with certain things. But for instance, for instance, Latvia together with Poland and Lithuania is willing to send a European Union a military education um, mission to Ukraine to assist to transform Ukraine, Ukrainian military forces. This project is still on the hold, still on the delay. Secondly, I think we simply should engage with Ukraine, not only on humanitarian part, which we are, we are giving them a humanitarian assistance, not only on political reform, not only to speak about corruption. These are important things, because you, Ukraine should become more, more European country. But that involves also a military cooperation, because this country is defending its borders and this country have been seeing a bloody war where it's uh, part of its territory have been occupied by russian forces mm. there is nothing to do and i think we should also in media use the right language there is nothing to do with separatists because so-called separatists which are for instance in donbas i apologize for my language but mm. they can't make a step to the right and left without acceptance from the russian military forces so this is the truth and we should deliver this truth to our people and politicians. Mr. Pabricks, I'd like to turn to another crisis on NATO's eastern border, and that's, of course, the thousands of migrants trying to cross into Poland from Belarus. What's Russia's role in that crisis? Well, first of all, uh, this is not a migrant crisis. This is a hybrid attacks of Belarusian government by using migrants and by using all those gray areas of security perspective within our minds, which is somewhere between white and black. So basically what happens, as you know, Belarusian government were inviting people, bringing them to Belarus, to Minsk hotels, and afterwards with buses bringing to the European Union borders. Obviously, this is a Lukashenko tactics, but I would not believe that Lukashenko has a free hand to act without at least a silent support from the Russian side, especially because these uh, hybrid attacks on our borders started in the same time when Russia was exercising together with Belarus in uh, military exercises Zapad 2021. So I think that they are analyzing very much how we do respond, how is strategic communication, how is cooperation between uh, European and NATO allies, and what kind of response we bring here. So this is another point which we should see also in correlation with growing crisis at Ukrainian borders. Because once we speak about the possible mm -hmm. war between Russia and Ukraine, about Russian invasion to Ukraine, we should not forget also other scenarios. For instance, an Anschluss, as you would say in German, of, of Belarus in Russian territory without war. Because Russia needs this territory, it controls Belarus. The question is how long they will allow this proxy to survive, how long it will be relevant for them as a semi-independent country. All right, Artis Pabriks, Latvia's defence minister, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for calling.